How are you doing, Tyler? How are you doing, mate? You right? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm not bad, Chase. Yeah, not bad. Um, thanks um, for taking your time to have a chat, mate. I appreciate that. Nah, that's all right, mate. No worries. Um, first of all, mate, um, how did you first get involved in boxing as a youngster? Um, I started when I was 10. Um, just I was an overweight kid, really. Um, so a boxing club actually started right near me. Um, and just, yeah, my mum and dad just basically took me down there just to really lose weight. Uh, more than anything, and then you know I was I was really into football and things like that, but I was sort of getting left on the bench and all that kind of nonsense. So yeah, my mm-hmm. parents took me down to to the boxing, and it just sort of went from there really. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I uh, got the back for it. Um, did you have a, a, a good amateur career? Yeah, I had a good amateur career. I had sixty nine fights. I think I won about forty five. I won the Junior AVA, and I got to the final as well. Um, mm. But I actually lost my first seven fights when I was 11. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I was terrible when I first started. Oh, like I say, I was just a bit of a lump and <laughs> knew how to windmill, and that was about it, really. But yeah, it wasn't until I sort of got to about 14 where I actually started to um, get better and, yeah, sort of progress with it, really. Yeah, uh-huh. um, I'm just looking over your record. Um, You've had three fights um, with, with Danny Connor. Um, yeah. yeah. You're good pals with Danny, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a huge sort of um Two wins and one loss. Um, I think the loss was a, I think it was a point in the, the loss, I think, mm. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the 2014, you lost to Tyrone and Murs. Um, how, how does that, sort of looking back in that, um, seen your, your performance against Tyrone and where he's at now. Do you think that's a good a good thing? But um Yeah, I mean I was I was only twenty two. Um it was, I think it was my eleventh fight. I'd had like eleven pro fights I think when I fought in. Uh-huh. I basically got given the opportunity to fight him. No one wanted to fight him. I think he was like something stupid like mandatory for the English for like a year and a half literally yeah. no one wanted to fight him. Um, they ran me up and just said, look, you know, it's there. And I, I, I said yes straight away, like, you can't um, turn an English fight, uh, title fight down, um, yeah. no matter who it's against. Um, yeah, and uh, I had, I literally had the worst training camp possible for that fight as well. Um, yeah. I'd done my crystal cartilage, Kevin Mitchell done, uh, yeah, busting up with in sparring, and then... About three weeks out of my fight, when I just got over that, um, I was sparring Bradley Skeet and I cut my nose. Right. So I ended up in hospital getting that glue back together and right. that literally um, felt bits in the first round of the fight. But that's yeah. like, in, in no way, I wouldn't have beat Tyrone Nurse if my training camp had gone spot on. And, and you know, if, you say, if I'd had about six arms, I probably wouldn't have beat him either. So, you know, that's in no way saying any excuse. He, he was far better than me on the night, but, um, uh-huh. yeah, the training camp was a disaster, really. Uh-huh. Um, the fight after that, um, you beat Ricky Boylan for the, the English um, Super League yeah. title. What was the plan to get into that fight? Did you know, did you think that he was going to try and push you back early on? Um, to be honest, I was just sort of like, um, it was, it was one of those where I probably had actually gone to have a fight, um, and then you sort of see the fight, how it um, sort of flipped on its head a bit and about after that round five, six, where uh, we clashed heads and I got a really bad cut on my eye. <laughs> and um, the blood was going into my eye and I, I couldn't see. So I actually had to start boxing on the back foot and, and to be fair, it probably worked out in my in my favour in the end uh-huh. um, and just made me win it a bit. Well, in my, in my book and everyone else's book made me... A bit more of a clear victor, but um, obviously being the away fighter, I think like one of the judges had it a draw, and a couple of others had it by about two rounds, which was ridiculous. So I won it by, I won it clear. I think uh-huh. Uh-huh. one that had me winning by about five rounds. But yeah, uh-huh. that's, how, that's how the way it goes. How does it feel for you getting into a fight like that, um, knowing that everybody thinks that you're the underdog going into that? Uh, I, don't, I didn't mind that. It, don't, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I think the odds for that fight, I was 5-1 to one, uh-huh. um, to win that. Um, a lot of my mates made big money off that fight. Yeah. Um, and it was just, yeah, no, I love it. You know what, it was just like, I've always, I'm, I'm a small town boy. 
uh, even when I was an amateur, you know, I, I was from a club that had like three three lads fight out of it, and I still become a national champion. Yeah. And everything else, so it doesn't bother me. You know, I'm always that that small town boy that no one cares about. And and then uh, I turned up and yeah, and I won the title, obviously, when it was um, when it was supposed to be a dead against me. So it was, it was a great uh, result all round. Yeah. Um, last Saturday, um, you fought Johnny Garton um, for the English belt title. title. Um, which uh, do you have any sort of plans? Do you know what what you're actually going to do? Are you going to have another fight, or do you sort of think about stuff just now? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I'm sort of like, if I'm honest, my, my career's been... My, my career, like, I'd like to write a book, really. My career has been absolutely mental. Um, yes. You know, and it's, it's been one of them where I like to sit down I'm sure, and, and, and sort of <laughs> say about it to people because people wouldn't believe what I've been through. Mm-hmm. I've such, such a, yeah, like, so I've had a mad career. I mean, I, going into the fight last week, I hadn't boxed for 10 months. Um, I broke my hand... So I'd come off the back of a broken hand. Um, you know, I just wasn't good enough on the night. He, he was the he was the better boxer. Um, but yeah, it's one of them where like, do you know what? Like the money, the money's disgraceful in boxing. Um, uh-huh. And just a load of other stuff really going on in, in the in the background. And I've sort of, if, if I'm deadly honest, I was about three or four weeks out from the fight training I, I trained so hard but like I literally couldn't have trained any harder for that fight but I just didn't want it anymore I, whether I won it or, or obviously I lost I was sort of going to say to myself look that's probably the end of it now uh-huh. um, you're, you're still pretty young you're 25 aren't you yeah I'm 25 yeah like I said I've only had 17 fights but just my career outside the ring has been unbelievable so I'm just a bit like coming to that stage where I'm a bit like, do I go on or and do I suffer it even more or, uh-huh. or do I just sort of call it a day? And I've got a young family now, I've got a baby girl, so it's, it's you know, I've got to earn money for them, and there's far easier ways of earning money than uh, than boxing, uh-huh. Uh-huh. If, if I'm brutally honest. But yeah. um, we'll see what happens. I sort of said if, if a big fight come up, when it was a really a fight that I was sort of got me pumped up and got me going and, and got me excited I'd have a think about it but I'm probably going to call it a day to be fair yeah uh-huh. um, you've got a you've got your own gym as well is that right yeah, yeah. Um, the Warriors workshop is that correct yeah that's it mate yeah yeah. You, you still, you, is that what you're going to be doing then just for sort of personal training yeah I've, I've, I've um, yeah, I've got a really good little gym now I've, I've really built it from from the bottom up really it's um uh-huh. And um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Like I've been working today. I got my, had my first uh, day back uh, today, and um, yeah, like you know, it's just it's very rewarding. Um, you know, just helping helping people, and I've just got so much experience. Like I say, in in and out of the ring, I've got tons of experience making weight, everything else, and you know, I just feel like the natural move is to now go into helping other people and, uh-huh. and hopefully I can get the buzz uh, out of that that I did in, in the fighting. Uh-huh. Is that something you've thought about? Like maybe going for your, your trainer's license or something like that? Yeah, I thought about it, yeah. Um, again, it's, it's one of those where, you know what, like for a little while I've, I've just had enough of the pro game. I've, uh-huh. um, it's, it's, it's just beating me down a bit. Um, so I probably want to uh, get away from the pro game for a while. Um, and just see, just see what it takes me. Really, um, I mean, I could go down the amateur route um, and things like that. Uh, you know, the, the thought of having my own professional fighters really, really does excite me. And, and you know, I, I look forward to that in the future, perhaps. But um, again, you know, my trainer who trained me, literally, there's not really much of a living in it. Um, so you have to be honest with yourself and sort of say. <laughs> Yeah, what's going to be best for yourself, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you get any special mentions, you'd like to give to anybody, Taylor? And yeah, of um, a, a guy called Dan Meston, who uh, of DM Roofing, he really helped me out this last fight, especially when um, when I broke my hand. Um, he still he still sponsored me and 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 helped me out massively when I was expecting my my baby girl. Um, I literally couldn't work, obviously, with a broken hand either, so 
he helped me out with money and um also I've got a friend called um Aaron, Aaron Gage who's who's helped me out just purely from the from the bottom of his heart. He's um he's helped me out with money and that from my camp as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm very thankful of uh, of those people who've helped me yeah. along with my career. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, Tyler. Um, I wish you all the best and whatever you decide to choose, um, if you're carrying on and if you're giving it a bye, but I wish you all the best, whatever you do. Yeah, not for me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, thanks very much for your time, mate, and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, no problem, mate. Right, thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.